Okay, it's time now to have a look at going through some previous exam questions. The equations that I'm going to balance as examples here are real previous questions that were on GCSE chemistry papers in the past. They are probably very similar to the ones we're going to continue to get in the future in GCSE science exams. So this should give you an idea of what to expect, what to look out for. Okay? So to start off with, we're going to start going through them. The first one is an equation for calcium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid. So we start off here. Right. First things first, you want to count everything up. I'm not going to bother with different colours this time, I don't think. We have one calcium, one carbon, three oxygen, one hydrogen, one chlorine, one calcium, two chlorine, one carbon, two oxygen here, two hydrogen here, one oxygen here. Remember that these oxygens go together, so we have three oxygen on the right hand side. So looking at this, the first thing that jumps out to me when I look at this is that the chlorine is unbalanced. We have two on the right hand side and one on the left hand side. So let's put a, I'll use a different color to add my balancing actually. I'll have two here. So now we have two hydrogen and two chlorine. Okay, so counting up again, two hydrogen on this side, two on this side, two chlorine here, two chlorine here, one calcium, one calcium, one carbon, one carbon, three oxygen, three oxygen. So there, that is balanced. So again, what I was doing there, I counted up how much of each type of atom we have on both sides and then started making adjustments to bring the atoms that were not balanced into balance. So I saw there was too much chlorine and on the right hand side compared to the left hand side, we do not want a fraction of a molecule. So the only alternative is to increase the amount on the left hand side. And again, I put a big number in front rather than a little number because adding a little subscript number is changing the chemistry that we're talking about. Okay, next one, we have iron three oxide reacting with carbon. So let's count everything up to begin with. Two iron here, one iron here, three oxygen here, two oxygen here, one carbon, one carbon. You'll notice immediately the carbon on this side can be isolated and the iron on this side can be isolated. Therefore, I'm not going to I'm not going to be worrying about them just yet. I'm going to be focusing on carbon dioxide and iron 3 oxide to balance them. So I'm going to pick oxygen. We have two oxygen on the right hand side and three on the left hand side. So the little trick I explained a few videos ago is we know we need to find a common multiple. So how are we going to make three so if I increase this to two, we'd have six. If I increase this to three, we'd have nine, etc. How are we gonna get these multiples of three to go into a multiple of two on this side? I'm gonna do two times three equals six, and that's the goal of how many oxygen we should aim for on both sides. And I'm gonna go right ahead and do that. How do I get six oxygen? I need a two here, and I need a three here. Let's quickly recount everything. 
that makes 2 times 2 is 4 and 2 times 3 is 6 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6 so we've now balanced the oxygen let me just get rid of this we've balanced the oxygen out now we just need to balance carbon and iron and that's pretty straightforward and that's because we have parts of these atoms that are isolated in the equation so if I want to balance carbon out if I want to balance carbon out on the left side versus the right hand side we only have one on the left hand side but I can just add a 3 and now we have three carbons and carbons balanced the same can be said for iron we have 4 versus 1 and iron is all alone on the right hand side so I can just add a 4 recount that and we have 4 so this is balance 2 moving on we have a reaction of ethanol with oxygen otherwise known as burning it first things first count everything up two carbon here one carbon here hydrogen we have one two places that hydrogen appears on in uh, ethanol but well, five plus one is six hydrogen oxygen one here two here three oxygens in total and two and one so three oxygen again on the right hand side forgot about the hydrogen let me just count that two so again let's look for what is out of balance and let's prioritize atoms which are not isolated by that again i mean oxygen here is all on its own so if we end up needing more oxygen we can balance that easily so let's focus on carbon dioxide to begin with here to balance the equation you'll notice we have too many carbons on the left side versus right hand side so let's just add a two here recount the atoms that come from this two times one is two uh, carbon and two times two four oxygen plus one we have five oxygen in total so we've now balanced the carbon now we need to balance the hydrogen so here we have six hydrogen and here we have two let's stick a three remember three times two means that we're left with six so we have six hydrogen here now and the oxygen remember we have to account for changes in oxygen too so oops let's count this i'm going to start writing it individually now so two times two is four oxygen here three times one three here so we have seven oxygen and we have one and two three oxygen here just keeping track of that in case i forget about it but in the meantime the three we put in front of the water here that means we have six hydrogen atoms on the right hand side and we also have six on the left hand side and that's because we have five hydrogen here plus one at the end so hydrogen is balanced carbon is balanced all that's left is to balance oxygen how are we going to do that well let's look at the right hand side of the equation we have seven and we need seven on this side so we have one already in ethanol this is the formula for ethanol right here so let's say we need an extra six oxygen on top of this one 
straightforward enough. Let's put a 3 in front of the O2. Recount. 3 times 2 is 6. Meaning, 6 plus 1 is 7. So, again, this equation is now balanced. Let's move on to another one. This is the reaction of ammonia with hydrogen. We've done this before in a different video, but let's do it again here for the sake of being thorough. Count everything up. We have two nitrogen here, one here. Hydrogen, two. Three. So, the little trick again, we need to get two and three to have a common multiple. So two times three is six. So let's aim for six hydrogen on both sides. How do we do that? Well, let's put a two here and a three here. Three times two is six. And 2 times 3 is 6. And don't forget we've also got an extra nitrogen here too now. And that's that. Done. Another one, a reaction of zinc with hydrochloric acid. First things first, count things up. One zinc, one zinc, hydrogen, one, two, chlorine, one, two. You might have spotted something here, and that is zinc is already balanced. There's one on both sides, but the two things that are not balanced, you have the chlorine and the hydrogen are together on this side. So we only need one step in this balancing, and that is right here. We put a two in front, and now we have two hydrogen and two chlorine. And that's now balanced. Okay, let's do a couple more, and I'm gonna pick a couple that look a little bit scary, just to show you that they're not actually too scary. So this one is the reaction of iron hydroxide with oxygen and water to make iron 3 hydroxide. So we have iron 2 hydroxide, which is FeOH2 There we go. So that might look a little bit intimidating at first glance. And the first thing we need to do, regardless of how it looks, is count everything up. We have one iron on both sides. For oxygen, bear in mind, I'm going to count this last actually. So for oxygen, we have two here, one here, and bear in mind, we have this subscript two, which means we have two lots of everything inside of those parentheses, which means we have two times one, two oxygen here. Great. And the same you need to apply here. We have the little three, which means we have three lots of everything in these parentheses. So we have three oxygen in the products. And let's count all this up, 2 plus 2 plus 1, 5 lots of oxygen. Finally, let's look at hydrogen. Again, 2 from water, and 2 times 1, 2 in the iron hydroxide. So we have 2 plus 2, 4 lots of hydrogen. And the product side, 
3 times 1. So we have 3 lots of hydrogen. Some things to look at. Again, we have isolated oxygen, so we can worry about oxygen last. So for the time being, let's look at what else is out of balance. Well, we have hydrogen is out of balance. So we have four hydrogen versus three. Again, let's look at a common multiple. Four times three is 12. So let's aim to get 12 on either side of the equation. And this time, we have multiple different choices. If we want 12 hydrogen on the reactant side, we only have one choice. We need to increase how many of the product we have. We have three per molecule, so four times three will do that. And let me just quickly recount everything before moving on. Four times one, four iron, four times three, 12 oxygen, and four times three, 12 hydrogen. Okay, but on the left-hand side of the equation, if we wanted to add hydrogen, we would either choose to put hydrogen here or here. We could either increase this or this or both in a different combination. So how do you pick where to start? Well, if you focused on first increasing how much water we have, then what you're going to end up doing is also increasing the oxygen, which I said at the start, we can leave to last. Oxygen is not as important. Whereas if we increased the iron hydroxide first, we'd also increase oxygen and iron. So we should deal with this first, which means if we want more iron, which we do, remember, because we have one here versus four here, then let's stick a four in front here. Actually, let me just write that a little bit neater. Four, and recount everything. So this is going to be different, and these are going to be different. So how much iron do we have? We have four times one, four iron. How much oxygen do we have? Well, we have two times four is eight oxygen, and the same for hydrogen. So let me just tally up again. We have eight plus two plus one, 11 oxygen here. And we have eight plus two, 10 hydrogen here. So let's look overall at the big picture. We have four, four, Iron is balanced, and we have 12 oxygen, 12 hydrogen, versus 11 oxygen, 10 hydrogen. So we need more oxygen and we need more hydrogen. So why don't we just try this? Increase how much water we have, and we'll increase how much hydrogen we have, and how much oxygen we have. Recount it. And what do we end up with? We end up with 2 times 4 four hydrogen from water and two times one, two oxygen. And let's count all the totals up again. We have eight plus two plus two is 12 oxygen. And we have eight plus four, 12 hydrogen. So that is now balanced. So it took a few more steps, it took a little bit more thinking, but the same process applies. The same stages of counting and then adjusting and then recounting. And you just do that constantly in a way that makes sense 
and in a way that you're comfortable with until you arrive at a balanced equation. All right, let's do one more and another scary looking one at that. So this reaction here. Okay, and the reason I pick this is, once again, because we have so many, so many different reactants and products that you might have to worry about, and that might bother you. That might be a bit intimidating, and you might panic and worry what you're going to do. Well, I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to do what you do every time you balance an equation. You're going to count out how much of everything we have. One nitrogen here. One there, and one there. So we have two nitrogen on the right-hand side. Oxygen, two here, one here, two plus one, three oxygen, and here, three plus two, plus one. So three, two, one, three plus two plus one is six, Okay, excellent. Lastly, no, second lastly, okay, penultimately, one sodium, one, two sodium. On the right hand side, and lastly, hydrogen. We have one versus two. And yet, just double checking, that is the only place that we have any hydrogen. So, how do we start? How do we approach looking at this? As always, look for something that's not balanced. Look for an atom that is unbalanced, that is in a different quantity on one side to the other, and let's start there. The one that jumps out to me is nitrogen. We only have one nitrogen here, and we have two nitrogen here. Okay? So, how might we go about doing correcting that? Well, let's double this. Now we have two nitrogen and also for oxygen. Remember, we have oxygen also in sodium hydroxide. So we have four plus one five nitrogen now, five oxygen rather, five oxygen. Okay, so what we've done so far, the nitrogen is balanced. What about hydrogen? Well, let's have a look. We have two hydrogen versus one. So again, we're going to need more hydrogen on the left-hand side. How are we going to go about increasing that? We are going to increase this and recount everything. So two sodium and two oxygen and two hydrogen. Remember, we've got to total up the oxygen again because it's present in multiple different reactants. So we have four plus two, six oxygen. But we've got hydrogen two here and two here, so that's balanced. So we have balanced nitrogen, we've balanced hydrogen. What is left? Sodium. Well, we've got two sodium here. We've also got two sodium here. What about oxygen? is the last one we want to look at, and we've got six oxygen on the left hand side and we also have six oxygen on the right hand side, which means we have balanced the nitrogen and we've balanced the hydrogen, and in the process of doing so we've also balanced all the other atoms, so this equation is balanced too. 
So, although it looks scary, a little bit intimidating maybe, the same principles apply. Count everything, and then adjust based on what you count. But for something like this, where there are the same atom in multiple different molecules, like oxygen here and here, it's important to keep recounting. thoroughly. Hopefully this was helpful. I don't imagine you'll come across any exam questions that are more difficult than these. These are a wide range from relatively simple to ones that, like the last ones we did, that are a little bit more complicated and a little bit more intimidating. The important thing is you don't panic. You solve these in exactly the same way. They might take a little bit more time, but at the end of the day it's the same process.